All right, what's up, you guys? It's Ashley, and I'm a character and creature concept sculptor and also a streamer for ZBrush Live on Wednesdays. Um, here's a quick tip on how to do quick low res hair using the uh, the Alpha Curves brush in ZBrush. Um, so what you can see here is just like these, each one of these is pretty low res. I mean, all things considered. Uh, this one's only 10,000 points. Um, and these are a couple of them put together for 30,000 points. And I used in combination some deformers as well, which I'm going to get into just, you know, lightly sprinkle some of that on top of this so that you guys can get a quick way to do some hair and make some like really elegant little um, swirlies and things of that nature, which you can also use for more abstract cases as well. If you're doing some more freaky stuff, I like to, I like to just like really break geometry. So deformers are a great way to do that, but also keep things contained depending on what you want. So, um, you know, if, if it's not hair, you know, you can also do this right with deformers, which I, walked through how to make these wings in a separate video, but to bend them this clean, right? And that, that was deformers. So I will show you how to use some of my favorite deformers to create this kind of stuff. So first things first is the make, uh, let's make the actual hair strand, right? Turn those off, grab a sphere. And uh, in our brush palette, there is over at you hit C, there is a curve alpha brush. Now there's also curve alphas. That's if you're wanting to work with multiples at the same time, I usually just do it manually by clicking curve alpha and then spreading that around um, and translating them myself. But uh, once you have this selected again with the alphas, you can go into your alpha box um, and you can look up whichever alpha you want. They're all going to give different results. This one, for example, if you were to drag it all, gives a very like stylized look to things, right? So if I were to split that off right here, this will actually give you a very stylized look once you do a uh, dynamic sub D. So I usually have dynamic working with this stuff just because then you can easily, oh, by the way, if you're moving things and you're getting this, it's because you just put an alpha on. <laughs> so turn your alpha off and now you can just start moving this around with a big brush, right? And you can get um, some pretty nice stylized things. So this is just like literally a square tube. But now let, let, let's say, let's say, you know, you want to do something a little bit more complicated with more hair strands. Well, in that case, you're going to want to take an alpha that has a little bit more detail. So, for example, something like this. I'm just using the defaults here. You could bring in whatever shape you want and work with that and you can get some very interesting things. This also works for wires and tubing and things of that nature, right? Because essentially what it's doing is it's taking this alpha and creating the cap as that alpha. So the cap of all of these hair strands here, as I drag this out, you can see it has multiple different things. The cap all the way down here, right? All this, this cap right here, if I split this off, this cap is that alpha, right? And so it's just generating these tubes from whatever that alpha is. And that's the high res part of it. Everything else is kind of like, it is what it is, right? And so you can get some very interesting tubing and things of that nature. When your alpha splits off like this, then these are going to be separate geometry pieces. This is all one piece right here. This is a separate piece. This is a separate piece, separate piece. So if you were to split by parts with this one, split the parts, say OK. It is not. Oh, that's because you have the cap down here. So if you wanted to split it to parts to get even more control, you could hold that and remove it at a lower resolution. You could say delete hidden and then split two parts right like that. And now you can see exactly what I'm talking about, how the alpha dictates each strand, right? So that's very cool and very useful. Um, for making sure that all of this stuff is, uh, in fact, usable on its own. So if you wanted to drag that out and now all of a sudden you want to, 
you know, only move one piece at a time, you can. Another way to do that is to keep it all in the same thing and just kind of like create a poly group, like auto groups for it. But that way you have a lot of control over this kind of stuff. And again, dynamic um, sub D will actually allow you to work at a fairly high resolution, like appearing like so. It's very clean, smooth, um, while you do this at a lower resolution. So, okay, that's out of the way. Let's just go ahead and grab this strand right here that I dragged out. So this strand right here is the same alpha that I showed you that gives us different, um, these are sort of like different strands. It's very, very simple. It looks like hair-like. And what we can do then to get the uh, deformers going is press W so that you grab your gizmo, center it by clicking this little doohickey right here. Like, you know, it's the Google <laughs> Maps thing. You just click it and, um, and then you click the gear icon. So when you click the gear icon, you're going to have all of these things pop up and all of these are you different deformers that you can use. So some of my favorite ones to use are bend arc, bend curve. I like using inflate, taper. I love using even deformer soft um, and twist. Twist is a great one. And you know what? We're going to start with twist just to show you some stuff. And we're not going to get into every single one of these because they could all be their own videos. But twist, if you click on twist, then each one of these, as you can see, there's a little info box that pops up when you hover over them just to help you out because th these can be a little bit confusing. So now that we're in this deformer box, it goes around. You can see the bounding box right here. Now twist, if you pull on, let's say the bottom area right here, you can see it's going to apply the deformer based on this tapering off that way. So most strength at the bottom. So this, again, if you were to do it at the top and the other way, it'll just straighten out. But if you were to pull it down, it twists in the opposite direction. Likewise, if you were to start getting a little bit more freaky and go from the side, you can start getting twists like that. You know, you can get twists in this way, in that way. You can twist it whichever way, depending on these cones, right? And they all go inside and outside. So you can have a whole bunch of freedom with all of this as well. So let's just leave it like that because that's kind of cool. And so now if you're happy with your deformer, you just click that little gear icon right here, right? And then go over to accept. Boom. Now it's there. And you know what? I kind of want to have a little bit more fun with this because I'm not done. I'm not done with it. Let's put, mm, I don't know, let's put, a, let's put a taper on it. Why not? So here with taper, we've got a little bit more things. So we've got the Z opacity, we've got the X opacity and the Y opacity. And this is all just going to affect how these other cones are reacting. But again, this exponent is how much of a taper you're going to be getting, right? So if you pull that one out all the way, you're only getting like this little tiny, tiny, tiny taper. It's barely affecting. But if you were to pull it really close, all of a sudden the taper is, well, it's affecting a lot more of it, right? And so when you're playing with these cones, you can get a lot of, uh, there's a lot of freedom essentially with what you're, what you're doing. All right. So let's taper it out a little bit like this. Apologies for the random lawnmower in the background. And we can, I guess, like make it nice and thin like that. And you can do some tapers like this as well to kind of give it a more waterfall effect if that's what you're looking for, etc. And you can just get some elegant looks this way. Anyways, you say accept to accept your deformer. Again, you can just keep doing this. Let's put a bend arc on this. And here's like, you know, you can twist it. So twisting will literally just like rotate it around. This is the radius of, you know, it's the same sort of idea as the exponent that cone that I showed you. You drag it out more and it'll be a larger circle radius that it applies it to. Less will be less, right? And then negative will make it a very tight, tiny circle. This one, very large circle. So you can play around with that cone to get different, you know, bends and things of that nature. Um, and then it's the same thing all the way down here. So you can bend these however you like, make them as dramatic and beautiful and crazy looking as you want. 
there's that. Uh, we can accept that and create, like, you could probably like stretch that out a little bit more. And suddenly this could be kind of like something that you would put as a sideburn, go down into dynamic and voila, you have this little piece of hair, which again, you don't have to apply all of the deformers that I did. You have this little piece of hair that now, you know, it's only 10,000 polys. You can grab your gizmo, hold control and drag to duplicate, let go of control. And now you can start positioning these a little bit more, make them longer, layer them up, right? And then make a couple of them and, you know, work, work them together. And suddenly you have all of this control over these beautiful twisting hair strands. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Have fun. Enjoy Deformers. Happy Summit. Thanks guys for watching. And I, I, hope, you, I hope that was helpful.